Two weeks ago, I made the most crazy purchase of my entire life. I spent over $500 on the largest ant in the entire world. Nearly two inches long, she looks like a creature from another world, a true titan among insects. But here's the catch. These ants are notoriously difficult to keep alive, and even the most experienced ant keepers can have trouble keeping them. Can this lone queen defy the odds and build a massive thriving ant empire? Or have I just wasted a small fortune on an impossible dream? And this, this was my challenge. With my new queen ant scheduled to arrive at any moment, things quickly went wrong. Days passed after the expected delivery date of my package and it was nowhere to be found. And very quickly my excitement turned into anxiety. Had my ambitious plan fallen apart before it could even begin? With the shipment delayed, there was nothing that I could do but wait. I had no way of knowing if the package was lost, damaged, or if the queen had even survived the extra time in transit. So to keep myself busy, I focused on preparing for her arrival, crossing my fingers that it wouldn't all be for nothing. To ensure the queen's survival if she does arrive safely, we need to create a habitat that simulates her natural environment. First, we need a suitable container. I'm using this clear plastic container, which is great because it allows us to see inside without disturbing the queen while also providing a secure lid. The first step was to drill some ventilation holes into the top of the container. Proper airflow is crucial to prevent mold buildup and to keep the habitat healthy. I'm using a 1 8 inch drill bit to make several ventilation holes into the top of the lid. For most ant species, this size hole would be far too large, but since this is the largest ant in the world, I can afford to make the holes a little bit bigger without worrying about escapes. This ant species originates from northern Africa, so the best way to replicate their natural environment is to create a warm, humid habitat where the queen can settle and establish her new colony. To achieve this, I'm using reptile soil, which provides the ideal texture and moisture retention. I've also added a piece of wood with a natural nook, giving the queen a perfect spot to dig out her founding chamber. To further enhance the environment, I'm also adding some sphagnum moss to spread around the enclosure, helping to maintain humidity and also create a natural setting. With everything in place, the setup is now finally complete, and you can see the spot under the wood where I hoped that the queen would establish her new home. The final step is to lightly add water to the nest, ensuring that the soil has the right level of moisture for a comfortable and stable environment. Every day I checked the tracking, anxiously waiting for an update on when my queen ant would arrive. And now, finally the package is here. But all of this preparation means nothing if she didn't survive the journey. My fingers trace the edge of the box as I hesitate. If she didn't make it, the entire project, everything that I had planned, ended before it could even begin. Taking a deep breath, I carefully slice through the tape. As I lift the lid and push aside the packing material, and then, I see it. A small, neatly wrapped vial nestled inside. This had to be her. With the new vial in front of me, only one thing was on my mind. Did she survive? The package had arrived three days later than I expected, and before being shipped, the queen had already laid eggs. I could only hope that they had made it, and that she hadn't stress eaten them during transit. This was it, the moment that I had been waiting for. As I pulled out the cotton from the tube, I squinted in to see if I could see anything, but I couldn't see a thing, not even the slightest of movement. There was only one way I could find out if she survived, so I carefully placed the tube into what I would hope to be her new home if she was still alive, and with a deep breath, I slowly slid out the cardboard barrier of the tube, my hands slightly shaking. Every second dragged on as I braced myself for the worst. Was she in there? Had she and her egg survived? Or was I already too late? And then, I saw her. She was alive. Not just alive, but bigger than I could have ever imagined. This camera doesn't even come close to capturing her true size and beauty. I compared her to the largest ant that I had in my collection, and she completely dwarfed it. A massive wave of relief washed over me. Even though the package was three days late, she had thankfully survived. But then, my heart quickly sank. I scanned the tube, searching for any sign of the eggs that she had before shipping. Nothing. They were gone. Whether they hadn't survived the shipping or she had eaten them in the stress of transit, it didn't matter. She had to start over completely, and after everything, this was a devastating setback. But she was alive, and that meant that there was still hope. Under the macro lens, her massive form was even more stunning than I could have ever imagined. 
Her deep black and fiery orange hues contrasted beautifully against her vivid yellow legs. This wasn't just any queen ant. This was Dinomermix gigas, the largest ant species in the entire world. And even more incredibly, I had managed to get my hands on the rare yellow-legged version, known as Dinomermix gigas borensis. The camera simply couldn't do her justice. She was a true giant, a living marvel, and now she needs a name. Drop your name suggestions in the comments below, and I'll pick my favorite, and I'll even feature your comment in my next video. As I was capturing more macro footage, everything took a sudden turn. Before I knew it, she ran straight for the edge of the container, and then, before I could react, she climbed right onto my hand. This was not supposed to happen, and as she scurried across my skin, my hand began to tremble. These ants don't sting, but if she felt threatened and decided to clamp down with those massive jaws, there was no doubt it would end in bloodshed. And after a few seconds, I managed to coax her back into the container, before she could plan another escape. After all the excitement, I decided to offer her a drop of honey, hoping to give her some energy after that stressful journey. But to my surprise, she didn't seem very interested. Maybe she was still adjusting to her new environment, or maybe she just wasn't hungry. I'll leave it in there for a couple of days, but if she doesn't touch it, I'll remove it to keep her setup clean. I will be keeping a close eye on her, and I will be updating you all on how she's doing soon. But before the next video, she needs a name. Drop your names in the comment section below, and I will pick my favorite. Be sure to check out my Instagram in the description for updates on her and my other ants. And with that said, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for part 2.